morning. morning. Welcome to King of Kings. I have, I would say a few, but it says I got a couple pages of them here. Announcements here. Um, Are you waving? Yes. Please, let's start with that. Um, Vinny is going to lead us in a little reflection for Veterans Day. Come up to the mic. Welcome, everyone. I like to recognize the officers. Well, that's me, anyway. But uh, this is a prepared speech for the state of Florida. <clears throat> Veterans Day is an official United States public holiday, observed annually on November 11th, that honors military veterans. That is, persons who served in the United States Armed Forces, it coincides with other holidays, including Armistice Day and Remembrance Day, celebrated in other countries that mark the anniversary of the end of World War I. Major hostilities of World War I were formally ended at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918 when Armas and Germany went into effect. The United States previously observed Armistice Day. The United States holiday was renamed Veterans Day in 1954. Veterans Day is not to be confused with Memorial Day, a United States public holiday in May. Veterans Day celebrates the service of all United States military veterans. Thank you. Welcome home. Let us not forget the ones we lost. Thank you. Um, I would ask that the veterans in the congregation, those who served in our armed forces, to stand. Can you stand up, those who served? And I think, yes. Th and thank you. Thank you for your service. Um, speaking of service, on Tuesday evening we have our council meeting. I want to remind council members that we're reading a book, and we're the, the second chapter, the book on the chapter on worship, is what we'll have read beforehand. Now, I received a confession recently from someone who says, "Pastor, I'm not a reader, and I've really tried to read, and I just can't focus on the words. I've never been a good reader." Well, I said, I thought about it, and I said that person later. I said, well, the wonderful thing about this book, it has wonderful reflection questions scattered in groups through the chapter. So even if you don't read, if you struggle reading, and I'm a reader, and there were points in my life, seminary, we had one week, 1,200 pages of reading to do, and I did not do all the reading, I can tell you right now. Um, but if you can just... If you can't read it, read the reflection questions and think about them, reflect on them. And then if there's something about that that prompts you, provides you, if you read just a few chapters in the section before, or a few paragraphs in the section before that, it will serve maybe as opposed to having to read all the whole book word for word. So, Tuesday night council meeting. Um, the next Friday dance is on November 19th. Uh, Sunday, there's a jam today at 2 o'clock. We are still looking for people who are willing to volunteer to be part of the management of the food pantry. You can see anybody on council if you're willing to step up. Um, as a committee, There is a committee forming on that. Um, the prayer for healing class will be again this Thursday morning at 10 a.m. for those who are taking part in that. Um, second new member class is today after service, roughly about 45 minutes learning all about Lutherans and this church. Uh, Thanksgiving Eve service, November 24th at seven o'clock. Um, and there's a pie social to follow. And like I said last week, well, with pie being followed, the sermon will be short because obviously I like pie. Uh, yard sale with a blood drive on Saturday, November 27th, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Reserve your spots now. Um, Signing up for ushers, would you please 
make your little speech, your little plea. <laughs> Good morning. I volunteered to line up the ushers, and I passed clipboards last week, and I had one person sign up. Which was more than she had the week before. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Always in the positive here. I, I realize uh, there's some health issues right now, or, or, uh, and if you can't do it now, but you think you could do it later, please sign your name and, and just put a little note there. I'm going to pass them around again, and this is a good way to serve the Lord and your congregation. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. While those sheets pass around, just a couple more announcements here. Merry Widow's lunch at 1 o'clock at Susie's 2 on Old 54. Pastor, yes. 1230. 1230, okay. The Merry Widow's is at 1230, still at Susie's 2? Yes. Is it any good, Susie's 2? Yes. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. We're always looking for a good place. What's her cuisine? What, is it continental or is it... Grouper? Okay, you got me sold. Um, we're going to ask for prayers for the family of Helen Parente. Uh, she passed November, in November, and we have no other details um, other than there's an obituary in the pa uh, paper. And I've also been asked to that we would lift up Terry. Terry, would you raise your hand? Terry's going to have surgery this week, and apparently it's major. So keep Terry in her prayers, and your surgery is on which day, dear? Wednesday, Wednesday morning at, at 8 in the morning? Okay, seven, between 7 and 9. Between 7 and 9 at Trinity Hospital. Um, so Wednesday morning between 7 and 9, lift up a special prayer for Terry and the steady hands of all the surgeons and wisdom and all that that she can get through this, and, and thank you for sharing that. Are there any other announcements for the good of our family? I don't see any hands. All right then, I invite those who are able to stand as we begin our worship. And we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from the ways to your ways and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sin for Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in praying the prayer of the day. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast among the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Daniel. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish, such as never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Psalm 16, protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good of all. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have the richness of it. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. <clears throat> Excuse me. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. A reading from Hebrews. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I invite those who are able to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, Opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew ask him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines, but this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. As I've shared with many of you, my first big break in managing construction projects came when I went to work for a store fixture company. It was actually the largest store fixture manufacturer in the world at its time. They were out of Brooklyn, New York. And after going to work as a carpenter on a particular store, the supervisor there took a liking to me, took me under his wing, and groomed me to do the job he was doing as well. And over the next four to five years, I traveled around the country doing department store fit-outs. And depending on the scope of the contract, everything from the whole interior of the store to certain parts and pieces of the interior of the store. Now, this was a great job. And one of the things I loved about the department stores, it was a place that you could actually direct people to go and see the work because many of the jobs that we would do in construction um, people are never going to go to see I mean I did a lot of lawyers and accountants really fancy offices in high rises in Philadelphia but unless you had an occasion to go there and get through the security were invited there you would never really see the work the only purpose people that could see it would be those who had a reason to be there who worked there and the same with hospitals and off time schools and other institutions that I did. But department stores, anybody could go in and see these great temples of commerce, these holy faces of consumerism. And I was doing them in the very end of what I've referred to as the mollification of America, where these department stores were anchoring shopping malls and they were building shopping malls all over the country. And this was through the, the late 1970s and into the ni- early 1980s was when I was part of this. Well, many of these really fancy stores, and they were fancy. They were, this was all part of that boutique concept where you walked in the store, and it wasn't just a big open space with racks. It was all these like small departments that you had to wander through the store, and all these departments had a different theme or a different nuance to them. So it was quite impressive work. Well, that was the end of a certain age the great department store age. And many of the department stores, in fact, many of the malls, have really had to reevaluate how they approach commerce. They've had to retool what their push is. And many of the great department stores, well, you know, how many have gone out of business? How many have been swallowed up by another company? Well, here's my example. I was in this area in 1981, in the spring of 1981, spring, early summer of 1981, and I did a fit out in what was a Moss Brothers store on the Gulf View Square Mall. And it was a pretty nice looking 
It wasn't a huge store, but it was a pretty nice looking department store. When I finally came back to this area because my wife and I had gotten married and her parents happened to live just up the street. It was no longer Moss Brothers, it was a Macy's. And shortly after that, Macy's, as they've done many places in the country, closed the store down. So then it was an empty shell. And since then, it has been demoed. And not one stone is left upon stone. And this is the truth about works of human hands. Just think of the buildings that in our lifetime that have been taken down, either through cataclysm, natural cataclysm, or man-made cataclysm, or just the fact that the whole society and the, mark, the market changed. Of the seven wonders of the ancient world, these great construction projects of their day, there's only one that's left standing, and that's the Great Pyramid. All the rest have fallen. And maybe there's a foundation, maybe there's some blocks in the Mediterranean that are records of this, but the buildings themselves, the statues, have all gone. Even in this modern age, when they built the Astrodome, was it 1964? It was heralded as the eighth wonder of the world. Remember that? The Astrodome, how important that was? Very first dome stadium in Houston. You know, the Astrodome sits disused now and has faced the records ball a number of times. And there's a, a movement to try to save it. The SS United States, the fastest ship during the age of the steamships, sits in harbor in Philadelphia docks and there's a movement to save it from the scrap heap. This is what happens to our works of our hands. And churches are not exempt from this. Churches, the last year that I was in Philadelphia, four churches that had been there for all of them for well over 100 years were raised. Three of them that when we first moved to Philadelphia 10 years before were still open and serving people. And one of them was a church that I was ordained in. Three churches, buildings, were raised to the ground. We can't put our faith in works of human hands because the ages end. And this is an important concept, especially when you read the Bible, to understand the difference between the end of the age and the end of all things. Because there have been a lot of ages that have come and gone in our lifetime alone. I use this example regularly in Bible studies. I talk about when I first started listening to music, I bought a stereo where I played LPs. Because we were in the age of the LP. Well, that was replaced by the age of the 8-track tape player. And those of us who had 8-track tape players remember those well-timed kathunks sometimes in the middle of a song. And they were replaced by cassette players, which were replaced by CDs. And each one of these were a different age. Now, I still choose to live in the age of the CDs because they still work as far as I'm concerned. But it's getting harder and harder to find CD players because my children have everything in their phone and they can plug their phone right into the sound system of their car and call up their entire music menu out of their phone. The ages come and go and some of them we can laugh at because they're minor and some of them are great. We in many ways are in the start, the end of an age and the start of a new age within the church. Many of us have lamented we'd like to go back to the way church was, the way church was before the pandemic. How about the way church was when we grew up in the church and we had Sunday schools and we had as many children in church as we had adults. We want to go back to that age. But I saw something, one of those notes, I think it was on Facebook, and it said, stop trying, stop mourning the church you had and start leading the church you have. And I think that's part of what we all need to do, start leaving, leading and being part of the church we are right now in this post 
COVID-19 era and embrace some of the changes that might come as well as let go of some of the things that we used to do. But that's aside the point because Jesus just didn't talk about the temporariness of our buildings. He also warned us about in these times of change, whether because of a natural cataclysm or because of a human conflict, or even just a social change, there is upheaval. And beware of those in the midst of the upheaval who would lead you astray. Now, not all of us are going to experience the same upheaval in the same way. After 9-11, or just say on 9-11, on that faithful day in human history, I'm sure the people who were on the planes and who were in the World Trade Center and who were in the, the Pentagon in that side that was hit experienced an end of an age that none of us should ever have to experience. We as a country experienced the end of an age right there, kind of an end of our age of innocence. We were attacked in our home ground. That's not the first time because I think World War II started, our entry in World War II started with the attack on Pearl Harbor. But in our generation, it kind of took away that imagination that we would be safe. But the warning of Jesus to beware of those who come and say in the midst of these troubles, whether they're our own personal troubles, our own personal struggles, or in the midst of these great societal changes, the ones who claim to be, I am the one. I am the chosen one. We are all too familiar with Jim Jones and David Koresh and the poor souls who put their faith in those individuals and ended up giving their life. We live in an age where we have certain ones who are saying they are the one that it should be followed and demand absolute fealty to them while not returning that fealty to the rest of the people. But for me, what I always ought to remember, my fealty belongs to the one who gave his life for me, who gave his life for you. Jesus did not demand that kind of sacrifice when people. In fact, Jesus talks about the sacrifice of a contrite heart, of understanding our own brokenness, and understanding our own hands sometimes in those ends of, ends of the age of our individual life. Jesus sacrificed himself in love and faithfulness so that we all are free and clean and can enter the temple and kneel before God as whole people. When someone claims, I am he, I am the one, I am the chosen one, well, that instantly disqualifies them because I have the one who was chosen already to follow. And he feeds me with his body and blood. Amen.
In Christ, you have heard the word of faith, the gospel of salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our, confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, our creator, you showed us the path of life. Bless faithful people everywhere with humility as they extend compassion to those who have experienced harm in religious spaces. Cultivate healthy congregations that tell of and enact your reconciling love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our constant, you love our universe from beginning to end. As the seasons change, protect animals that migrate and hibernate. Bring them safely to a sheltered place and a more abundant season. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <laughs> God, our stronghold, you are present amid disaster. We pray for those affected by natural disasters. Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, floods, hurricanes, and wildfires, and the first responders who support them. Calm their fear, supply their need, and be solid ground beneath their feet. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, our guide, you are greater than we can imagine. Surround congregations with your expansive inclusion. Be present in the midst of disagreements, differences, and questions. Unite people of diverse viewpoints in the love of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. <laughs> Excuse me. God, our healer, we pray for all who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit especially Gail, Nancy, Helen, Sharon, Kurt, Jade, Howard, Isabel, Antoinette, Phil, Karen, Robert, Violet, Isaiah, Bob, Alex, Jean, Terry, Sydney, Diane, Linda, Phil, Jack, Patty, Karen, Raymond, Bob, Clay, Robert, and Suzette. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our beginning and our end, your beloved people shine like the brightness of the sky. We thank you for the lives of all who rest in your eternal mercy, from famous saints to the people we have loved. Assure us of your resurrection promise. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, I offer you an opportunity to lift up your own prayers. You may lift up those people in places that you are praying for, and you may lift them up either silently or aloud. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our hope and our strength, we entrust you for all whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And as we share peace, I invite us to stay safe. 
Our numbers in Pasco County, while they have been dropping really fast, have been dropping much more slowly. Um, the, this past week, it was 29 cases a day on a seven-day average, which was down from 32 the week before and 34 the week before that. So while they were dropping like this, they're now dropping like that. So let us share peace, but share it safely. Peace be with you. And after you share peace, I invite you to be seated. And just a quick reminder that we are not passing offering plates, but the offering plate, well, you'll trip over it when you come in. So if you do, we appreciate our church exists because of the offerings of those who are part of our community here. And so, so please remember that. Thank you. It is a wonderful song to hear at any time. I'm often brought back to a time I was attending. It was a festival of homiletics, and it was in a large sanctuary, and there was probably a thousand people attending. And they sang that song, and the minister was so moved. Before he preached, he says, I want to hear it again. And everybody sang up and sang another verse of that. And, you know, most of my life has been within smaller congregations, but when you stand 
with a group of hundreds and thousands and you sing a song like that, it just feeds your soul. So just maybe my imaginations can help you wonder and imagine what that's like. I invite those who are able to stand and let us pray together. The offering prayer is one voice. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this is the cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. I don't know about you, but I got a big amen at the end of that. So let's say amen. amen. And now I invite you to be so bold as to pray the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Susan, thank you for coming forward. Um, all are welcome to receive communion here at King of Kings. Um, I will serve the, I'll serve Susan first, and then I'll serve the choir and all the musicians. And then we're going to ask the right side of the church, the way I'm, this side of the church, left and right confuses me. I must be dyslexic. As this side to come up as, at row by row, the ushers will guide you. Because after communion, I invite you to play in the water of your baptism. Touch it, make a sign of the cross on your forehead, splash it around. I think we need to celebrate the joy and the forgiveness that we were all brought into the church in. So, the body of Christ is given for you.
good bread. I invite those who are able to stand. Blessed Jesus, at this table, you have been both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together in your heavenly banquet. Amen. Amen. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless you and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Led on by the saints before us, go in peace to serve the Lord.